In 2011, when the Museum of the American Military Family and Learning Center was founded, we had no idea how fast and far we'd go. We started as an idea, a concept, started when it was apparent there was no other museum out there telling the military family story. Our vision was noble, bring together people with shared and converging paths as community, inspiring a sense of place and history. We started slowly and steadily. We learned to be a museum and a library. We had to pick the right board members to align ourselves with dynamic partners, the National Nuclear Museum, the Albuquerque Balloon Museum, and the Special Collections Library. We attended museum conferences and classes and joined professional organizations. We reached out to the theater and arts communities in New Mexico. We wanted to do it right. We didn't want to make promises we couldn't keep, run ourselves into debt, or worse yet, let down the people we wanted to honor. We chose to stay small, in online presence, and dream big, all the while providing relevant free programming to the community. Over the next few years, we hosted film screenings, sometimes flying in the movie directors. We created spoken word performances, built four exhibits, and attended rallies and conventions all over the place. Our success gave us an identity crisis, not with us, we knew who we were, but with some of the public. You're at the nuclear museum, someone would say, or you're one of those blue star mothers. Another would guess, you're the folks with the jeeps and the guns, aren't you? Boy, we really needed to brand ourselves and to clear up the muddle, but how? Well, a friend of a friend designed us a logo. Another found us some inexpensive, well, relatively inexpensive office space. We put up a sign and opened for business and waited and waited and waited. The old saying, if you build it, they will come, isn't always true. We realized that it would be a slow, tough, uphill battle to get the word out about the museum and to become known in the community. We learned some hard lessons. People don't always keep their promises. Funding sometimes gets pulled. And people don't always get us. After one man actually said to me, military families, so what? My army wife's side took over. I know how to be resilient. I know how to be inventive. And I sure know how to get things done. I strengthened my resolve, pulled on my proverbial boots, and marched on. Our board and I were in it together, and through grit and determination, we decided we could do it, and we would do it. After a year of living on the second floor of the Bataan Military Academy in Albuquerque, we found ourselves outgrowing the space. When the school closed its doors for good, we found ourselves in the right place at the right time. A door had shut, and a window had burst open, and we landed in a perfect location on historic Route 66 at the intersection of the scenic byway, the Turquoise Trail. It's been almost a year since we moved into our space right next to Molly's bar, and we couldn't be happier. We are actually located in Molly's house, and what better than to be located in a house for our museum? We continue our programming, hosting movie days in our living room. We have events in our garden, and on the weekends, our kitchen is where we gather around the table and have book discussion groups. As a family, we gather together at the museum in celebration. We've hosted numerous naturalization ceremonies there. And as we grow, our board members, with decades of collective PCS experiences, make all the items fit just like a Tetris puzzle. And speaking of a PCS, we do occasionally find a moving sticker on one of our items. Please come visit us. This is your museum, telling your story about your military family life, the good, the bad, and everything in between. We celebrate your service, and we want to welcome you home. In 2000.